ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Let's start with Miss Denea. Because I think that was like one of the last podcasts I did. Me and Emily did the podcast on Denea Jackson. And to be honest, I think we were pretty fair in our assessment. You know, I don't understand like why I get attacked for anything I say, but I mean, there were people in the comment section crying, saying that, oh, we're being harsh. Oh, this is what abuse looks like. That's why, because you know, Emily was saying it was something about her that wasn't jiving with her spirit. Now it's not jiving with y'all's spirit because she's an abuse victim and this and that and this and that. And like I said, I felt like we were fair in our assessment, like for me. And then people got mad because I caught them out for giggling. And I'm like, if you watch that two part episode, I mean, this was like almost a total of, I believe, close to three hours. The way they were laughing incessantly was just annoying to me. And I understand the difference between people laughing when they're uncomfortable, because I get that sometimes people laugh when they're uncomfortable. That wasn't the case with her. The way her and this man, they just kept laughing was just weird. I'm like, what the hell? Is, like, you're talking about something serious. You're talking about abuse. And it's just all this weird giggling, but whatever. So anyhow, um, it came out that we were right because I had wrote this comment on my YouTube video. So let me share my screen with y'all real quick. You know, t Girl Damas, honey. t Girl Damas never takes a break. I may not be on here, but I be peeping shit. So let me pull up my screen. All right. So Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. So this is what I wrote on my video that day. I was replying back to somebody and I said, yeah, I see a lot of people only showing sympathy. While her story is sad, she was definitely a willing participant who benefited greatly pushing this false, perfect marital facade with her ain't shit was been. As long as the mansions and the money were available, she was content. The fact that after all he put her through, he filed for divorce says a lot. She will most likely start a podcast and be another self-help guru for sad, depressed women who need a mentor. After all, she learned from the best. So that is what I wrote. And then the next day people were like, oops, Tigo Diamond strikes again. She's starting a podcast. Um, she's charging $5,000 for an infidelity boot camp. So we went to go research this and I could not believe this. This is somebody who says that she's broken and she's going through this and that. And so she's starting a recovery boot, uh, boot camp called Healed, Teaching Deliverance and Healing. Okay, that's cute. But look how much she's charging. And that's just like one-on-one -on -one coaching profit from your pain. $4,997. You might as well round that up to five grand, boo. Then they said that there's another package where it's like $7,000 total. You know, this is the part that's just really disturbing to me is that so many times on social media, it's like people come in with all these stories and sympathy and get rich quick it's it's just strange that people just elevate her and my thing is i just kind of saw through the bs not even a few months ago she was putting hexes on people yeah i remember when i was doing the live stream i'm like i can't listen to any more of this crazy shit she's literally putting hexes on people and these are people who are trying to tell her you know to get out your marriage we're here to support you you know she's saying that People need to be delivered. She's mixing her religion. You know, she's trying to use her religion to excuse the behavior of her and her husband. To me, my issue is she was a willing participant. And the more I think about it, who was filming all these sexcapades? When she said that she was watching him and that she then wanted to do the things that the women were doing on the tape, who was recording this? Was this some type of threesome gone awry? Because she kind of reminds me of the type of girl 
who's willing to do anything to keep a man. And even indulge in, de in degenerate shit that she probably normally wouldn't be indulging in, but because she wants to keep her lifestyle and her husband, she's probably engaging in those threesomes. I wouldn't be surprised at all because how did she find all this? You know, it, it was multiple. Remember, she, it was multiple tapes. And I would just watch these women. Are you solely watching the women? Or are you watching the playback? Because you're there too. And all you guys were filming this foolishness. Now I had to think to myself, the fact that she did all that, you know, giggling and laughing was the joke on all of us. Because the man made money from everybody watching the YouTube videos. It gave her a platform. And the fact that she wouldn't interview with anybody non-secular, right? I believe the reason why she went on this Christian man show was, again, to get people to sympathize with her, to pimp religion, and to get, like, Christian women behind her. And then she's going to come. Then she came out. She pulled the okie doke. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to do a boot camp. Now, I'm not saying that she can't make money from her pain, right? Because it's her pain. It's what she went through. I'm not saying she can't start a YouTube channel and just, you know, put Derek Jackson on blast. But the fact that somebody who's not healed, because this man literally had to divorce her and kick her to the curb. The fact that she herself is not healed, but she wants to teach other women healing for $5,000 is a joke. If she really wanted to help other women, I'm not saying she needs to do it for free, but $5,000 is a lot of damn money per person for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. This isn't like a, a, a weekend retreat. This isn't, a, you know, a, a whole month retreat. This is a one-on-one -on -one coaching session for five grand. What is she going to teach you besides, you know, put hexes on people, be mad that your daughter came out dark skin as if your husband isn't dark skin. I just find her to be a weirdo and I don't care who don't like it. I just, now that I see what her motive is, I'm glad I went with my first instinct and I wrote what I wrote. That she's going to come out and she's going to play, she's going to play a Derek Jackson. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's also behind the scenes doing this because his reputation for the most part, part is shot. A lot of women still follow him, but a lot of those women who follow him are women, you know, with low self-esteem who need a, a man who didn't even really claim his wife to tell them how to carry themselves as women. Because women who have common sense, they don't need advice from Derek Jackson. But I would not be surprised if because his stock has gone down, a lot of people are no longer watching him and supporting him. He's losing money. And when you're losing money, you're losing your lifestyle. And in order for them to maintain their lifestyle, because divorced or not, they have children together. So this is probably a scheme that they came up with together. I'm being drugged. Nobody trusts me anymore. But you're the so-called innocent one in this. Let's go ahead and milk that. I would not be surprised if they were both in on it. Am I frozen? People are saying they can't see me. Can y'all see and hear me? Because I my screen is working fine. Okay, y'all can see me? Okay. If you're having issues, just go ahead and um refresh. I even got a different camera too, so hopefully this camera is more clear. Because my other camera just... I don't know. I just didn't like it. It was starting to look faded. Um, okay, good. But yeah, I just think, I think that she's full of shit. I think she's full of shit and she's trying to find a way to maintain her lifestyle. Like she said, I got to live the life of a real housewife of Atlanta without being on television. And see, those are the words I listened to. I listened to the key points. Everybody else was just focused on, you know, oh my God, he was cheating on her. And oh, she knew these women's bodies better than she knew her own. I'm listening to all the other Easter eggs that she's dropping. You know, and again, this is the part that's just kind of sad is that a lot of times anybody can come online and run good game, have some type of story. And this is how a lot of people now are ending up scammed. We talked also on that podcast about Cesar Pina, DJ MV's partner from uh, Flipping NJ. And I don't know what's going on with that story. People have been asking me for updates. Um, I don't know if they threatened that man, Tony, who had initially bought out the story, but it looks like he's deleted all his videos concerning the situation. So I really don't know what the update is. DJ Envy hasn't said anything else. You know, he was talking about gunplay, but he hasn't talked about this flipping NJ situation. And 
what a lot of people need to understand is that you need to like really vet people because there, there's so many of these get rich quick schemes out here, these gurus, crypto, NFT, flipping houses. And when you really understand real estate and the housing market, there's no such thing as a quick flip. Just to even renovate a home can take upwards of six months to a year, depending on the renovation. There's no such thing as just buying a dilapidated single family home and then seeing a 20% ROI in five months. That just doesn't make sense. You know, and don't you notice a lot of these people who are selling courses? Oh, I did prison time. I was locked up for six years. And now, you know, I'm, I'm in real estate. I'm flipping houses. I'm selling courses. No, you just find another hustle. Because the dope game, nobody wants to go to jail for the next 10, 20 years. So now the new hustle is on social media. The money is coming. Your money is not coming from flipping houses because you don't make money that quick in the flipping house game. Anything in housing is for the long game. It's not the short game. Unless you're working for like a major corporation where that's what they do is flip homes. But even then, it takes a while. These people are making money off of selling courses. That's where the bulk of their money is coming from. These courses, these weekend events and all that stuff. That's where a bulk of it is coming from. So people just need to like be careful because my thing is if you have $20,000 to give to DJ Envy, you know, on a flip, if you have that type of capital sitting around, why not invest in yourself? Why not go and find out how to buy a home yourself and flip it or save up until you have the funds to do the full flip? Why are we handing people that we don't know a hundred grand, 200 grand? So to me, when I see people who have a hundred grand to just hand a stranger that they saw on the breakfast club money, it makes me think, are these people washing their money? Y'all's not ready for that conversation. I'm not even going to go there. But it makes me think, where is this money coming from that they can just freely hand it over as opposed to taking that same money and going to go buy the property themselves? Because one thing is when you don't have legitimate money, and you don't have a legitimate way of how you accumulated that money because they check every fucking thing. And especially now that the economy is getting worse, they are triple checking everything with a fine tooth comb. I can't tell you how much shit I've had to submit in the past two weeks over and over and over again. Um, so if they have that type of money, then why would they not just go take a hundred grand and go buy a townhome and flip it? I believe they're washing a lot of the money. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.